episode 427 of Global From Asia. We're going back into blockchain e-commerce, the blue ocean. We had a little bit of a session a couple weeks ago. We're diving deeper today, and I hope you can catch this new wave. Let's tune in. Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now, your host, Michael Michelini. So thank you so much for choosing to watch or maybe listen to Global From Asia episode 427, Blockchain E-Commerce, The Blue Ocean. If you came to the Cross Border Summit, you saw me talking about this in November 2023. We kicked off the hardcore development and some really more formal structures in January of this year. And now we're just into just into February, almost March now. Bo is our CTO, co-founder of Lowpipe Foundation, the protocol powering e-commerce on the blockchain. He's, I think, a great presenter and, and we're so lucky he came back to our Chiang Mai e-commerce meetup. And of course, I brought the recorder with me, Snook helped out. I record on audio and there were some questions from the audience and we're also just inviting you to partake in our load pipe discord. We actually have had a couple of calls about tokenomics and others. I know some of you are not so much into crypto or I have had bad experiences, but I've had bad experiences too in crypto, <laughs> but that doesn't mean you give up. I mean, I think in the dot com bubble, people got burned in the dot com bubble in the 2000s, right? But I believe in blockchain. so. Maybe this will convince you some more. Let's tune in. Are you looking for USA banking solutions for your e-commerce business? I am proud to say Mercury.com is supporting the podcast here third year in a row at Global From Asia. And we're proud to say because we use them ourselves for many of our own Amazon brands, and e-commerce brands and joint ventures with our US structures. And they're super easy to do online application, no fees and they have great customer support, have helped us with trouble with Amazon Seller Central over the years about some receipts and statements and everything like that. So we're so happy to say thank you, Mercury, for supporting our show, being a great service and supporting other e-commerce sellers. We're really proud to say they're a sponsor here. And we also have a video tutorial as well as an overview and a special link with a little bonus for you as well for us under certain conditions. Check it out at globalformasia.com slash mercury for that information. Thank you for listening and thank you, Mercury. So thanks for coming to the Ecom Meetup. It's a small intimate group. Today, <laughs> Bo, and, Bo and I will go through some blockchain e-commerce. I literally just shared on my Twitter yesterday, Andres on the top of lips, oh, yeah. lips, mm -hmm. where he did a session for, about Bitcoin in 2013 and there was like a huge empty audience and like two people like Sneaking out the back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it has today. <laughs> Actually, we, we're, this is what we want to hear. We want to hear, there's some people dialing in online. We want to hear, like, are you open-minded to blockchain and crypto for e-commerce? What your thoughts are? We're going to give you some interactive sessions today. But first, we're going to show you a little video. If you're watching online, I think they're going to share a link for the YouTube. But for those here, maybe you can give us your feedback after. It's trapped. 50% plus fees he pays to the digital emperor's oh, regime oh, for selling in the empire's market. In a world where darkness reigns and hope seems a distant memory, Merchant Lazarus man. sits, lost in thought under the blood moon. He feels trapped with his 50% plus fees he pays to the digital emperor's regime for selling in the empire's marketplace. He's also not happy with recent events. Just a few short days ago, a fellow merchant, Juliet, was walking in the garden, and her life was shattered by a cold grip of Emperor's guards. You have violated the TOS Bible. You are to come with us immediately. I have no idea what I have done wrong. She was shortly executed for breaking TOS terms. She had no idea of which she had broken. While in that thought, Lazarus sees a light from his tent, and decides to venture out to see what it is. He stumbles upon a relic of the past, a pouch glowing with untold mysteries. From where he learns in this pouch and speaking to the wizard, he realized that there must be a group he must assemble to rise up against this empire's regime. A new way of doing commerce, owned and governed by the community, for the community. But their meeting was disrupted. The rebels are ambushed and overpowered by the relentless guards. 
rebels are thrown into the Colosseum facing monstrous Goliath amidst a sea of cheers and jeers. As they are about to be crushed, they see a secret hatch opening magically or escape underground the Colosseum. They meet Nicholas who guides them on a rickety raft to get them outside of the Colosseum area to float down this underground river. Will you join them? We need your help. Join us on Project Raft Testnet, the first community marketplace on load pipe protocol. This is the new way of doing e-commerce. www.hamza.biz Okay, so that's the video. If you're in the, the online session, maybe you can give us some comments. If Snook can tell us if anybody's giving feedback. And Lorley, thanks for coming. Hi. No problem, no problem. Tell me, you get, what do you think? Yeah, it's good. It's, <laughs> it's an idea, I think the idea is a great. You can send it to the people, I think it's a great idea. Okay. What was your favorite part? Like, it's clear? Like, you're, what, what do you think is the message? For me, I think for me, the message more is that like as me being online seller so for me to become the seller on your platform i think i get that out of the video yeah yeah so it's for the community by the community so the the promise is web3 is it's not you're just a user you are part of part of the system yeah exactly i that's another thing to, to get rid of Facebook, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and being, being your own host kind of thing. Yeah, so. Thanks. Don, do you have anything? Thanks, Wade. <clears throat> I like the, the narrative element because it really personifies the like what you guys are trying to do. It's like this ancient Roman Empire regime, right? And enforcing all these rules on people don't make sense like that the girl said like she violated the TOS she doesn't know why and that was being executed <laughs> yeah. like, I, I felt like that so many times yeah. like, on, on Amazon and some of these marketplaces I think it's that's that's like a, a pain point that people can relate to but it's also like foretelling because we know what happened to the Roman Empire right and it's collapsed and so like there's there's some funny like poignant storytelling components that you guys mix into the, the animation that I think you can continue to, to play off of I almost would wish to see it like incorporate into the branding <clears throat> somehow and the messaging, mm -hmm. um, so it could be an ongoing theme for for Anza, Anza .net or, or Road Pipe. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's as far as the length and everything, it felt it felt good. It felt too long or okay. The, the animation stuff's really cool too. I mean, uh, that's AI generated art, right? Yes. And there's AI. like a, an additional element where you're you're creating that that motion. I, I actually don't know what was used for that last iteration, but it was a fixed picture, but then some AI tool um, mm -hmm. was used to, That's great. to to make it move a bit. So much better than static static imagery for video. Yeah. Lorley, do you have it? Thanks for coming. Do you have any? I only caught the end of it. Do you have any questions or feedback? Or do you want? I'd love to watch the whole thing. It would make more sense. Yeah, I know. We... And that's my fault. That's Travis' fault. Okay, so essentially, it's the the story is that the the emperor makes a sell in his marketplace, and we have no 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 power, no involvement, nothing to say, and we can be executed at any time for violating the terms of service bible. So we are trying to make a community owned and governed ecosystem that the sellers, buyers, community can own a piece of it and have a say in in the way it's governed. Oh, did I say that right? Do you want to? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that that sort of captures it, right? Like when we think of services like Facebook or Amazon and any of the fang companies, right? They have this, this widespread centralized control over large swaths of our lives, right? And those people are largely unelected, right? And the only incentives they respond to are stock price, right? And so when you have a system like that, you end up with these, yeah, Goliaths that uh, can't be competed against. And so 
building out a protocol that allows people to sort of atomize that governance, understand who it is that's running these sorts of things, and exercise some power to change it is, is like sort of the core, core mission, right? Bring, bring sort of a, a level of freedom back to e-commerce in this particular instance, but the, the wider like engagement in the internet commons, right? What, what does Hamza mean? It's a, actually, is there, is there a story behind it? Hamza, is, I, I pronounce it Hamza. It's a river that's in the South America that flows underneath the Amazon River that's wider and bigger than the Amazon River. So it's like an underground river under the Amazon. Underground river, how does that work? Like so there's... it's some people, it's very, very slow moving water. So there's somewhat of a contest about it really being considered a river because it's so slowly moving, but it's underground water moving towards mm. the coast, and it's underneath the Amazon River. Mm. So like a number of rivers. Yeah, so we of... talk, I, I blocked uh, comes the raft. So this is, we're in Project Raft, so as you saw in the end of the video, we're on a test net, and essentially the Hamza River are the two main drainage systems for the Amazon Basin. The flow rate of Hamza is, is basically a lot slower, but it's, uh, it's much wider and deeper than the, the yeah. Amazon River. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's in the Wikipedia, Hamza River. So yeah, it's here. So it's basically the underground Amazon, underground Amazon River. So the idea of the story is we have, we, we just showed you this part of the story. And this is escaping the current regime. Mm -hmm. And we made it to the underground river of Hamza. And where we're going to next is to this raft. And the raft is where we want to bring people that are early adopters, hopefully in e-commerce space, that want to participate in this testing of the raft. There's already been some 404 errors we're getting reported on Twitter and the idea here is we're going to move down this map together in the next year to complete the journey of escaping or escaping this current system going down the river and there's some other things that will get to the blue sea ocean. So we're trying to find our ways to the, the new world, the new ocean. So I think I, we put some bullet points for today's topics. Is there, so just let me know if there's anybody with questions. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the idea is why, actually somebody in a WhatsApp group says, why do you need blockchain for e-commerce? Bo, do you want to try to take a stab at that? Yeah. So again, it comes down to like power and control, right? So one is it allows you to interact trustlessly in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. And so you, you can conduct commerce between two people without having to involve intermediaries, which means that we have less fees and there's a, there's a couple of different like advantages to being able to do that. But the wider sort of like way that blockchains have evolved is as data availability layers in some instances where we can allow, so, in, so when you think about Amazon as a Web2 company, they host all of their own servers and they have control over all the data inflows and outflows and they have access control over who can become a seller and vendor and everything like that. And they can get rid of you if you violate their terms of service, which are opaque and sort of hard to understand. Whereas if you replace some of the, the infrastructure that they have built to support the front end of the Amazon website, then you can have multiple front ends that have a lot more predictable rules as to how commerce can happen. And you can create various incentive mechanisms to promote the kind of good behavior that you're looking to have in an e-commerce marketplace, right? So then you have value not just flowing and pooling to the only game in town, right? When when Amazon, like, like Walmart, would just move into localities and crush small sellers and everything like that and then bring up prices so that they remain profitable. Instead, a lot of that value gets sloshed around in the ecosystem, right? So you create circular economies where not all the, the value is pooling for executives and shareholders. And so you can create much more open, predictable systems that provide people a lot more value and extract a lot less from them for engaging in just commerce. Okay, great. I, 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 I wasn't expecting to show this, but this is a presentation that we did at the Cross Border Summit, but just for visualization. So load pipe or any protocol, protocols are like below the app, 
application layer. So they're, hey Nina. So they're, they're basically, this doesn't really exist with Amazons or, or Ebays. Everything exists at the, at the application level. Is that, am I well, saying? well, and you could argue that, so like the protocol basically is just their internal servers where they're storing product data, where they're storing user data, and then they serve that to their front end, the Amazon front end, right? But what we're building is sort of an open backend infrastructure that allows all that protocol data, all that user data, user social profiles, as well as product data to just exist sort of in the ether and then someone can come along and what functionally what will happen is they'll consume our data API to spin up a front end. We're going to spin up the first front end, which is Hamza. And, and again, so it allows you not only like assuming other people build front ends, right? Maybe those front ends are more concerned with intra-territorial commerce, right? So like one that's specific to Thailand or one that does commerce from Southeast Asia to South America, right? Depending on where you want to be, you can take all of your profile data, you can take all of your product data and import it to any other marketplace that, that again exists sort of at the application layer. But, but your data remains your data. It's tied to your wallet. You control it and you can take it with you when you when you decide to leave a marketplace, if you decide to leave a marketplace. Or post to multiple marketplaces. Is this, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be shy. Does this make sense or does this sound useful? I mean, the idea of owning your data, owning your your product information, your product photos, your 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 username. To to paint another analogy, just for like clarity's sake, take like the case of Facebook, right? You have a profile on Facebook, you have comments and posts and a history on Facebook, and if you chose to leave Facebook, all that data would stay with them. They own it, right? You can't take it to Twitter, you can't take it to some other social media site. It, it's just owned by Facebook, and if you created a new profile on a different social media app, all that data would be gone, all your friends, all this, this, that, or the other thing. There's like Web3 models of this, like Lens, and Lens Protocol allows you to create a profile on chain. It has this, they have this data layer underneath. And then they create a data API which allows people to spin up websites based on the data that is just people interacting with their smart contracts, which again, they don't control. You, they can't stop you from creating a profile on Lens. They can't stop you from making posts on Lens. What happens is a, is a, a, a developer, go down a little bit more, will come along and create something like Orb. Yeah or Butterfly, which are front ends that look like Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media app experience you kind of want, that all take data from the, the blockchain interactions that people are making permissionlessly, right? So similarly, like if this conceptually makes sense as a way of thinking about social media, it, it's the same basic concept, but with e-commerce. I mean, even to, big, to Bitcoin, like actually others, have been t I, I tried to pay for my Grab this morning and my bank, I use Bangkok Bank and I don't know if others, but a lot of people are saying Bangkok Bank app has been a problem the last couple of days. And they say use KBank or use other bank. But if, if it's even Bitcoin, right, you can use different wallets, right, to engage with your financial money, right? So the blockchain is holding your data, but you're just having different front end applications, whether it's a wallet, a marketplace. Uh, or any of these dApps or, or applications to pull from your data on the chain that you can prove is yours by having your wallet and your keys connecting to it. So maybe we'll take some questions. Yes, yes, please, questions. We want questions. Okay, so I don't, I'm not, I'm, I don't do e-commerce, but I do blockchain, so this is fascinating to me. So say I'm trying to sell a bag, and, and so I set up and sell a bag, but the setup I'm selling the bag is actually going on the low type protocol. So I can list it on the Hamza. Hamza. Yeah, so but here, if, like, yeah. But if I, but if something happens, I don't like Hamza, whatever, I'll, I want to move to that Africa one. Yeah, we have. Another one that I remember. Africa I, Mart. Yeah. I can throw it there. I don't have to reset it up. So like the fact that I put pictures and a description and a price, I can feel like this app or this app. Is Hamza centralized or decentralized because those apps could be either right yeah so so i mean hamza like as a, when you think about like hosting a front end that's right. centralized right, right. like so, like if you get you can get kicked off hamza and then no you so so the like so hamza so hamza is is two things right hamza is first the application layer which allows you to sorry sorry 
Okay. It's okay, okay. Hums, Hums is the, the front end hosted application. So it's like the HTML and CSS that's sent to you, right? Like we have to host that centrally on like an AWS server, maybe not Amazon, because, right. but, but we have to host it on a server so that that information can go to you. But really that's just looking at the blockchain. It is also like a DAO that has a governance model to decide what kind of commerce Hamza will allow, right? right. Yeah, yeah, so like which kind of categories of goods it's filtering. Because if you think about it, like a protocol is, is agnostic to the type of product that is listed on it, right? That's sort of the idea of permissionlessness. It could be anything posted. But like the, the, the marketplaces themselves have to decide what products they're willing to, 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 to host and what are the rules for kicking someone out, right? Which again, it's not as if there's no rules for that. It, it, and like, it's not as if someone couldn't spin up another front end that takes all the people that have been kicked out of another, yeah, 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 Hamza. But the rules are predictable and they're, they're informed by a governance mechanism that is a little bit more distributed, right? So at the smart contract level, there is, yeah, there's governance systems to decide, but that's sort of what I mean about like having a little bit more power and like representation right, is it's not just an unelected board and CEOs, right, it's people who are embedded and benefit from the system, right, and who are hopefully like engaging in the system according to the incentive mechanism, mechanisms that we've set up, right. So for instance, token emissions will happen as a re for people who are going through and reviewing products to make sure that they're correctly categorized, right? Because if you're, if you're dealing with like smart contract logic and you're saying, well, only, we'll only list electronics, then you need to have accurate data as to what the products are categorized as, right? So we can release the tokens of the protocol to, to incentivize that behavior, right? And the, the, the tokens themselves can have use in that, like, it, they can be required to stake as a vendor, right? And so if vendors are acting in a disingenuous or, or deceitful way, we can slash their stake, right? But also we can reward them with emissions, right? And so that's like the, the tokenomic model behind it is, is to create the proper, align the proper incentives to create a harmonious like marketplace. But I mean, the, the shorter answer, I mean, just to make sure, like OpenSea, OpenSea, right? I mean, it, they can ban a seller right. or they can mark NFTs as, as stolen, but the blockchain can still trade them. So it's separating the, the data layer from the application layer. So you can still get banned on these platforms, just like on Amazon, but you, your data will still exist on the chain. And maybe right. there's another like application you could pull that certain data. It might there not might not be all the data. Hamza might still keep some of it, but some of the data will be on the chain that will still be yours as the user. Well, so that's the lo load pipe is the protocol. What chain is it on? So we're thinking optimism right now. Okay. But I mean, like that that's not a set in stone decision. So you'll notice, like if you go to like Hamza.biz and you connect your wallet, you can transact in Sepolia, so Sepolia mainnet. Or you can transact on Optimism Sepulpia. So, so again, Optimism is sort of like where we're thinking right now. We're not 100% settled on that, or we haven't made a final decision. But, but that's what we're like shooting for. Right. And so that even if Hamza went away or something, the DAO everyone abandoned it. Yeah. Sellers can keep going because it's the data's on chain. Yeah. So it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people so, still need front ends to like to interact. Like right. sellers in particular still need front ends to like like no. E-commerce sellers are not gonna like get a master's degree and like learn how to direct interact interact directly with the blockchain in the same way that you don't have to like understand the database infrastructure of Amazon in order to post products right. there, right? So e even though there is this technical infrastructure behind it, that so so like there will still need to be front ends for people to continue to do that. Right. Yeah. But if, but if the Hamza DAO, everyone abandoned it. I mean, just like OpenSea, everyone should abandon that sure. one. Yeah. And another one will pop up because it doesn't really matter because none of the data is there. Yeah. And so, so it's like ideally, Hamza will be the best option, but it doesn't. It isn't the only option, and it isn't yeah. dependent on that. Like if Amazon goes away, yeah. everybody's stuff goes away. Yeah. Whereas if Hamza goes away, yeah. nobody's yeah. stuff goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I hope e-commerce sellers' are eyes are not like glazing over at this I point. I know that this is no, no, no. I this is a deep it's, blockchain discussion. But another example to give would be like Uniswap. Right, like Uniswap operates a front end that that looks at a, a blockchain back end, right? And so so you interact with Uniswap through an interface, right? But technically, like the 
what's going on under the hood is all blockchain interaction. So, so Uniswap could just, the company that's based in the United States could dissolve and everyone would still be able to use the function of Uniswap to, to swap tokens and liquidity pools without without having to have that company, right? Right, you just find another one. Yeah. So once you once I set up my bag and my price and my pictures and yeah. my description, it doesn't matter if an app goes away or another app comes, it's yeah. better, I go to that one, or yeah. I can be on all six or yeah. whatever. As, as long as people That's continue fine. building those fronts, right? So, I mean, but then, but yeah, that becomes like a social problem. Right, like, it, uh, is is it a protocol that makes sense for people right. to continue to build? And again, if, if incentives are properly aligned, if people are able to engage in commerce, and people are willing to take the legal risk of like handling cryptocurrency on either side of a transaction, then yeah, it'll the front ends will continue to, to pop up. But yeah. that's why we're building the first one, yeah, hoping that nobody sees how right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I was just seeing if somebody saw. I make sure. We're getting a little bit technical, but... I have, I have a question. Yes, please. Absolutely. So I'm looking over there at the bottom, and I see it's holding transaction data, user data, product data. What happens to advertising data, customer reviews, FAQs, all those kind um, of little bits of information? Do so reviews get, and stuff would also be, be uh, on-chain. It'd be on-chain. So if I was going onto the new platform, you would push all that information along with the product data onto, so my page would not look like a brand new page. It would look like, oh, I did yeah. Well, would it be clear to a customer that I've only just come on whatever the new marketplace is as opposed to all of this has been imported from Amazon? Do you understand the question? Yeah, no, I mean, it, I mean, like, your your profile would be, I mean, like, I, I think that would be something that would be a decision that would be made at the application layer. So, like, okay. someone mm -hmm. on that, because, again, when you're importing it, like, you, you're using the interface of whatever application that is. And so, like, when you join a new one, you would have all this data that is from your, like, sort of persistent social profile. So, reviews and ratings and uh, reputation. But, like, yeah, this, the, the, the application could theoretically be like, hey, this is a new seller on our platform, right? Because there will be rules that exist yeah. at the application level. Because, like, even think about it, like, there's data that we want to exist at the application layer, right? Like, we don't want addresses to be on chain, right? We don't want that data to be exposed, right? So those are things that are any sort of PII, right? Like, that's, you know, if, if they're doing, an application could decide to do, to use the underlying, like, transaction, but, but settle to fiat, right? So, like, banking information is things that we don't want on chain, right? So... So yeah, that would be an application decision. It could look like that, could not look like that. I'd be interested to, which would you prefer? Well, I would prefer to be able to push all the information, right? Yeah, and, and it just looked like you, but you have this. Dirty. That's not it's a, it's a mindset that's shift great. because just that's I just want to, because yeah. it's also with domain names. I'm, pre, I'm also pretty active in domains on a blockchain, which is a whole other topic. But the idea is your identity is not start, just because you sign up for the marketplace doesn't mean you start from zero, but that's how our minds are. I sign up for a platform, I start from zero. But in Web3, you're not starting from zero just because there's a new platform. Just because I, some, I sign up for TikTok on Web3 or Amazon on Web3 doesn't mean I'm zero, I have a one. No, I agree with you. You have a history that would so, be relevant to a different set of customers, but what would the customer prefer? What would the customer see as more honest behavior? Well, the, back to like Bo says, the, the application could show what data has been imported, what data is from its own platform, because it's mm -hmm. all on chain. So it could say this person's never transacted on this marketplace if it wants to display the content. And it, obviously, obviously, I, I'm sold on this idea, but <laughs> the idea is uh, there can be third-party applications that could run your your identity, your store, and say how how you've done across which platform you're, you're selling a lot on the eBay Web three, and you're not selling a lot on the TikTok Web three, but you're the user or whoever would be able to kind of do your own due diligence. Okay. So I think it's oh. just the same thing. And, and pricing data, is that held on the protocol or that would be held at the application level? That would be held at the protocol level, right? So like what the, what the, what the seller is asking for a product, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, again, not, not a lot of this is like set in stone, but there's like ways we could do it differently as well. Like uh, what, what was the, the, the like quasi auction concept? Where like um, you could allow, we could theoretically like allow users. To, like, say, so say you as a vendor decide to like list a product, we could allow users to come on and say, "Well, I'll take it for ten percent less, right?" And you could decide whether or not you you the, were okay with that. The yeah. cool thing about that though is it's, it's something that you can't really do easily in the current internet in a web, too, because they could lock their crypto into the contract, and you as yeah. the seller could take that money because it's waiting for you. And they could. I don't know how much you guys do NF. I'm I'm kind of a little bit of a DJ in NFTs and such, but you can make offers and you could give it for three days. You can make it like I'll only put the, I'll lock this money. You got three days to decide. 
I want this this TV. Uh, it's a thousand. You can bargain. The buyer has also power in this in the current web too. He, he, the seller has all the power. The buyer is just, do I want to pay that price or not? But in Web three, the buyer can say, I'll pay half. I'll give you three days. Maybe the, maybe the seller will be like, oh, this is really cheap, but I need to, I need it. Right, I'll take it. But you can also could imagine price discovery. You don't even know what price your product, what people will pay. Like on Amazon, you start high, you do like a low, you go break even, you try to bring up, right, Andres? You start low. You're trying to figure your price out. But imagine the buyer's telling you the price that they want to pay, and you choose. Uh, I have to comment. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, the question is, when will Hamza go live? Sure. Well, we we can. Do you want it? I'll let the CTA. Yeah. So so we have a te- like sort of a, a test site live right now, Hamza.biz, which you can log in. You can do a transaction. Again, it's all on testnet. So it's Ethereum Sapolia testnet and Optimism Sapolia testnet. But you can do sort of all the functions that will eventually be around on that testnet now. We're aiming for March to have a working, so, so right now it's built in WordPress. We're building it again in React for a little bit more native, sort of like crypto libraries and a little bit more functionality, customizability, everything like that. So we're aiming for March for uh, to have something workable. May 1st is sort of our, de- our like MVP deliverable deadline, which is about three months from now. And... And then, but that will be a testnet deployment. Because again, like a lot of crypto stuff, it, there's just very little margin for error, especially when you're deploying like smart contracts in a live environment, right? And so there has to be room for auditing and testing, and which is why like a lot of what we're looking at now is we're hoping people go in and engage, give us a little bit more data on what it looks like, how it feels, what you want, what you don't like. And then we are tracking all of that, right? So we're tracking contract and inter- like a MetaMask signups. We're tracking addresses and wallets, which we can then, we, we can look at those and say, hey, these have been the people that have been testing out and giving us feedback for a while. But like realistic timeline on a live deployment, I would say, so, and again, don't hold me to this. This is not a promise. But I would say somewhere around November makes sense, especially from a timing perspective, given that DevCon is in Bangkok in November, and this is like a Ethereum-based project. So, so yeah, I, I think for live deployment and doing some of the limited functionality in a live environment, probably November, but we'll be testing all the way up until then. So the other part is that doesn't mean there's nothing you can do. So like Bo says, just to be clear, we opened Testnet last night Asia time. We did that to give the community some way to engage with us. We've also opened the Discord for LoadPipe. We're going to have some games coming up in a, in, a, in a maybe a week or two. We'll have some kind of interactive games you can do. But like Bo says, we we don't want to have a, a we don't want to take customer funds and have a technical issues, or we don't want to be stuck in a part where we can't change something because we rushed. So we we are taking security to the most important out of all parts of this project. But there will be a lot of different things you can engage with. We also have a webinar. <laughs> we, we're keeping us busy. We have a webinar. If some of you are turning on online to this, but we also have a webinar tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Thailand time. Bo and I will also be doing one. Well, he'll be mostly going through the amazing content of Blockchain 201, 8 a.m. Thailand time. And we'll also give you some more tips about what's happening. But uh, yeah, as far as product, yeah, I think he said it best about the time you can actually buy or sell. And there, you can also talk to us if you're a developer. We'd love to work with you in and, and part of this ecosystem. We're trying to be an ecosystem. So Hamza is our first internal marketplace, but we didn't call it the load pipe marketplace purposely because we, we don't want to compete with our community. So we want your marketplace, your launch pad, your NFT launch pads. We, have a, we actually won the hackathon last October. John's also our lead developer here. Thanks for coming, John. <laughs> work really hard with us and Bo, we won a ETH Global Hackathon in October for, for Zeppelin, which is like an NFT crowdfunding platform. I'd love to I, would, I, would, I would say it's Zeppelin, the concept behind it is a trustless affiliates, right? So like being able to create affiliate links that are tied to individual products and be able to trustlessly, again, when, when you're integrated in a system that's all in crypto and you're keeping things in escrow and releasing payments, right? Like you can direct them in multiple places. And Zeppelin was like a sort of this conceptual design to, to building out an affiliate system. Because like any good e-commerce marketplace has a, a, a natural marketing 
are, right? And and Amazon affiliates like pave the way and say like, oh yeah, having affiliate links, being able to tie them to. But I mean, they don't really they don't tie them to individual products, do they? They just tie them to the marketplace in general. But obviously, in our construction, it'd be tied to individual items. And so being able to have that functionality, again, that's not a November thing. That's, I, I don't think that comes out with MVP, but that is certainly something that's in our roadmap that, that we, we understand is a necessity to having a functioning e-commerce marketplace. And so you can go to loadpipe.com slash ecosystem to see what I'm showing you. You can also register for the webinar there. You can see link to Hamza, and you can also see our, our, our hackathon video and our screenshots and our prizes. We won Polygon's best use of... CKEVM for the Zeppelin product. You can see our live demo. Still up, I think. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Anyway, we're getting a little bit off topic. Let's let's go back. But the point is, we want to make this an open platform. That's why blockchain. That's the value that Bo and I and others believe in. Is we don't want to have a closed ecosystem with a black box that we can del- delete you at any time for any reason without any repercussion. The point is we want to welcome you and, and, and embrace you as a seller, as a builder, as a buyer, and have your own say. Should we do a demo? I just kind of may turn the screen share off because I want to show my password. Uh, ask a question. Yeah, sure. on, um, on that note around some of the security for the protocol, like, you know, with Amazon and some of the centralized platforms, they're still able to be gamified, right? There's a lot of gray hat, black hat that happens. And how, how would be the, the best wording? Like, how how secure would it be from let's say i create a, a listing as a vendor for a new product hmm. that's in direct competition with someone some other vendors how, how difficult would it be for them to sabotage my listing which would of course be held in that in that protocol right and not be able to be changed no matter if i went from this platform to that platform you know what i'm saying because that'd be do you mean curious. do you mean by like like sandbagging your reviews or yeah um, let's say like i come out with a kick-ass product hmm. but a competitor has a, a bigger reach in that particular market, has a way to influence sway in the in the community to leave a handful of negative reviews mm. or, or comments that would push down the listing, which would be based in the at the protocol level. So no matter if I switched around to different front ends, it would still be a problem for me mm. on, on an even greater level than, than Amazon list. That's a really good question. I think we should write that down. I'm writing it. I'm writing it down. So right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the stuff about the reviews is not been the, like architected yet. So yeah. We're, so the, the the short answer is we're not sure yet. But but lo- maybe a longer answer is there's like a lot of complex stuff that goes into reputation. And we may at some point decide that like in order to have a review, you have to have like a because because we can say like, okay, in order to leave a review on a product, you have to have bought it. And that doesn't really solve the problem, right? Because someone could get in and buy like a couple of the products and then leave these negative reviews. But we do have like, a part of what we're, we're thinking about is dispute resolution in general, right? And decentralized dispute resolution and how to do it in a way, because Amazon does have an internal team to do that, right? And so we'll need people and members of the community to incentivize, to incentivize them to do correct dispute resolution and like, yeah, I mean, figuring out how technically we're going to do that, uh, I'm not sure yet, but we'll we'll come back to that problem. My, my 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 answer is yeah, similar. We're still learning and listening. I mean, we're not solving all the problems, but we're also making basically just making a transparency, mm-hmm. right? Right now, we don't know because they're making a black hat seller leaves me negative reviews. I don't really. I can try to look at their profile. I can try to kind of estimate it, but I don't really know who that buyer. But if it's on chain. I'll know this wallet. You can track every Because you see this play. happening in NFTs. You see this stuff happening in crypto. They Even somebody gets hacked. There's a hack and they steal all your money. They can still follow the money. And I, like I said earlier about analytics tools, like to, to Nina, I mean, somebody can make a tool. Is this, are these fake reviews or not? The reason Amazon got all crazy and deleted all the reviews in 2016, 17 is because there was news articles on, on like famous news in the US saying it's all fake reviews. That was the only reason that they did anything. Yeah, yeah. They didn't care it was hurting sellers. Yeah. The only reason they deleted all of them was they were it's losing right. face or whatever, mm-hmm. or their, their shareholders were giving pressure because they're on the NBC News at 9 p.m. about fake reviews on Amazon. That's, I believe, the only reason. Yeah. But in this system, it's totally transparent. So you think you got some black hat seller? Maybe there's some black hat seller detector.com. Connect your wallet, put the URL or put the wallet address. It'll run a tool. You can make a blog. You can. It's also a, like it's a it's a democracy. 
You can yeah. take it to the DAO. You can mm -hmm. say, this guy screwed me. Look, at I have all this data. They can vote. They can ban them. Yeah. But it's yeah. a transparent process. It doesn't make it doesn't make everybody do the right thing. It just makes it more open. Process though, like it sounds so like time intensive. I mean, it's happening. I mean, he's in a way knows way more about it than I do. But it's happening. These problems are happening now in Web three already, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, like this is this is the the tension though, right? Is like either you accept the speed of centralized provider, or you like have a democratized dispute resolution or like process. Back to right? China. China's fast, right? Because they just can do it, right? They can build a bridge. But in America, there's always talk about the how do we use the budget yeah. for the subway in New York. This right? would also relate as well to like issues of IP or trademark yeah. selling fake brands or all of, brands. It basically just exposes it all, makes it totally somewhat public. So some people think that's not good, right? But like, yeah, centralization is a black box. You have no control and they can do it fast, but you don't agree or know why they did it. But here it might be a little bit slower. Everybody can see it and it can get stopped. But it's like democracy, it's democracy. Well, and yeah, it's like I said, when, you, when we're talking about Hamza and like the, at the application layer, I think of it as like a governance system, right? And I think about the governors of Hamza being sort of the legislative that are regulating commerce. They're saying what is allowed, what, what is not allowed. But you have to have a judiciary, right? You have to have some dispute resolution mechanism, and the disputes can exist over whether or not a product was delivered or whose fault it is that this is when funds are held in escrow, who does it ultimately go to? But disputes can also be of like, hey, this person is sandbagging my reviews, and this is, and it can go to, to dispute resolution mechanisms that we will define. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big part of testing, I'm sure, right? Yeah, Tommy. So, so what about like an algorithm and the search ranking? How do you kind of make that one easier? Search out. Like, yeah, of course, everybody because, talks about rank. Because, rank. Because you were saying before that people don't need to be the new, new when they come in. They can import all the data and all the reviews, feedback, sales history, everything. So somebody who have a huge amount of that, isn't that like automatically place one? Because that's how it comes to the... That's how it comes to the search ranking, exactly. I mean, I've thought about this a lot. I don't think Bo or John's developers have thought about ranking, but I've been thinking about it a lot. Of course, we're not that we're not that far, or we're pretty far from that. But I've been I've been giving them other inputs than just the normal rank of sales, because Amazon, Google could only rank based on clicks and reads. Amazon ranks based on sales, but imagine we could rank based on behavior based on governance, based on being active in the actual governance of the ecosystem. Because these people will be able to vote. Sellers, I believe, have an obligation to uphold the ecosystem in a positive way. Because if they burn their reputation and they burn the seller, if, if we fail to Amazon, if it stays on Amazon or on Web2, we're failed. Their job should be to be active in the governance and success of the ecosystem. So imagine a top rated one wouldn't just be because he got the most sales, but because he's also be a good actor in the ecosystem. He's participating in governance, which can be totally tracked on chain. I mean, it's all of these ideas. But it's not just about sales and business. It's about your behavior as a, as a actor in the ecosystem. Is that answer based on Hamza or the yeah, so we're, we're actually still figuring this out too, but the, the, the ranking algorithm we've based on the marketplace. Okay, all right, perfect. So the marketplace is who would choose the rank. Yeah, because I think a lot of the questions it is that we're asking, as much as you can theorize about them, I, I think at the end of the day there's some things that will be low vertical problem and other things that will be definitely at the application layer. We're, oh, go ahead. No, even with the reviews as an example, like in terms of what they will agree to consume and what they will first up, all of that is, is set by the rules of the application layer, which if it's Hamza, fantastic, because you guys run that. But if it's a bunch of all the other ones, then it's anybody's guess, right? So well, the way in which it is you're feeding into all the different application layers will vary. No, yeah, and, and again, yeah, when you're talking about, like, how do we rank searches? Yeah, like, that's going to be a Hamza. It's, it's an application yeah, layer application decision, layer, right? Because yeah. it's like, because you're just pulling from the database, and then it's, like, up to you to decide how you weight either the seller reputation or number of views or, like, what, what your secret sauce is to, like, displaying search results. Like, yeah, it's totally an application question. We're getting, getting well, toward but ideally, the, the um, protocol will sort of create a certain governance or a certain guidelines of governance for the application. I think the application layer governance will always win. It will override whatever, because it's, it's, it's saying, what am I going to pull, what am I going to... So it depends, because 
let's say you have a token that is created by the protocol and that incentivizes users in different apps to use it. Well, I, right? and if you, I, I just as an example, right? It doesn't have to be the final, but if you have a common token that is used for governance purposes or even as a medium of exchange, which I don't think is decided yet, that could incentivize you to follow a certain way of behavior, regardless of which app you're going to use, provided you want it to be a part I of guess that. Yeah. I, I would <laughs> clarify here that, that application layer governance only has so much control, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's very difficult to implement, for instance, saying that, like, to say that, like, application governance allows you to change the search algorithm that's being implemented on the front end, right? But blockchains just can't control that kind of complexity. And so applications are entities in, in, in the legal sense, right? Hamza is an entity in a legal sense, and, and it is a company that will make decisions about how like it provides the front end, right? In the same way that Uniswap is a company, a entity. Right there, there, there is this like there's only so much you can control through protocol governance, or sorry, through the application layer governance, and there's only so much you want to control through application layer governance, right? And like I said, it's like these ha having control over some of the base constructs, like the the fee that will be paid to the protocol, right? That's something that can be governance, right? Having control over which categories of items will be listed in in the application, that's something that can be controlled by application governance. But there's a lot of things that like again color schemes of the CSS, you can't control that through protocol governance, right? It, it, it's just impossible to, to, to trustlessly and, and predictably execute on front. So we got about, I mean, at least our schedule is about five, ten more minutes of this. We want to make sure people have networking. I'll stick, or I think I'll stick around and some other people might not be able to stick around so much longer, but maybe we can quickly go through a test transaction if somebody wants to follow along with me just to kind of see what the raft is doing so far. Of course, this is very early stage. If you'd like to follow along with me, or you can try it at home later. So I already have testnet ETH. Again, this is not real money. This is fake money. We don't want it to, to risk any, any kind of bugs with real money. So you go to hamza.biz, and if you notice, you can sign in with your wallet right away. I usually do it at a checkout, but let's just pick any arbitrary product. I'm gonna, buy, I'm gonna add this iPhone 11. And I have it. I'm not yet logged into my wallet, but maybe I could buy some more things. I might have some stuff in my cache already because I've been testing this myself. Proceed to checkout. So one of the fundamental differences is your wallet, not your email. And it's saved my information. You'd have to normally fill that all out. Maybe I'm already logged in. But basically, see, you have your, you're paying with Ethereum, right? We're not paying with US dollar, we're paying with ETH. I know some of you would want USDT or USDC. I know some of you might not be comfortable to receive ETH or other highly volatile prices as a seller. So this will support USDC or T later. And then you choose your network. Right now, testnet, testnet, you can see, you can see eth eth Ethereum Sepolia or Optimism Sepolia. I'm going to do. Ethereum Sepolia, I have ETH already in there. There are faucets, it's called. So if you don't have it, you have to go to one of these faucets. We link this as best we can in our blog post, blog.hamza.biz slash raft. Again, I know this is technical. My friends are all saying the last, all the, there's, there's, it's a new thing for sellers. TOS, which I don't know if we, <laughs> and then pay with crypto. So it should prompt my MetaMask. Probably won't because it's a live demo, but it is. It's working. Okay. So now I'm buying with my crypto money this much Sepolia ETH total confirm. But I was a gas fee in the total. And it's the processing. So notice I didn't use my email. I didn't have to verify my email address or I didn't have to do all these other things. And it's just processing and then it will be recorded through my address. So my user identity is this address, right? That's my user ID. And actually, we do encourage you to use this. You have at least a week or two to, to use the current testnet before we make some changes. As Bo said, we are able to track your wallet address. We won't know who you are, but we'll know what wallet. So, of course, there's certain things I can and cannot say, but of course, we'll be 
happy to have more people using and testing the system. So the more that you use it and test it, the more we'll be able to see that and, and hopefully be able to reward you in the future as we develop the system. So again, this is not real order. Nothing's going to be shipped. This is all just a test. But we wanted to do this because we didn't want to wait until November, wait till next year. We wanted to show you something. We called it the raft. It's a test net. Please, if you're interested, join our Discord. There's also a survey. You can fill out this survey now or, or later if you're able to. We'd, we would like your email, your name, if you like. The address would be, of course, your encouraged to you. And then we have some questions. And just open any questions about feedbacks, features, questions, captures, submit. And this will also be an, another data point for us in our test net to see how many people are filling a survey out. It would be greatly appreciated. We're at one at our mark. Yes. Mike, is there a need to have a balance on your MetaMask? So you, you got to get the, the fake money. So they give it to you for free. So this is a, one of them. It's called a faucet. It's like a sink. They call it a, They'll give you it for free. Okay, you want to explain how that is done? Yeah, some of them are easier than others. They all have different kind of requirements. But I clicked the Ethereum Sepolia. We're, we're trying different ones ourselves, but each has a different way. Which one do you think I should? <laughs> I mean, so this one works. Yeah, just at least don't take for so, granted that... You yeah, will understand how to get the fake money. So if you can explain connect. it, that will be appreciated. <laughs> so really, all there's some of them are asking you to like share on social media, or some of them ask you to like log in with GitHub. It depends on how comfortable you are. So it read my address, and then I continue, and I'm going to get more. Oh, they, so this one requires you to have a Ethereum mainnet balance in order to get the Sepolia ETH. I would go to the Alchemy. Sepolia faucet. We should have linked them all. They, they seems like I think our team removed some of the other ones. Remember we were talking. See, they, they give you these games because that's how they make money. Because it's totally free. So I mean, it's hard to give a live demo. They all have different. I don't even know what this is asking. What well, is... we're supposed to go to one of the faucets. And okay, then... one of the faucets. Honestly, if we should add all, I don't know why they removed. Remember, you're saying one didn't. Some ask you. They all ask different things because they want you to do some kind of hoop before they give you the free money. Test money. So you fill fuck whichever one you're comfortable to jump through their hoops. You will then get it deposited to your balance. So you can see here I have 0.24 Sepolia ETH. This is test net. You can see I just did this transaction. I did this transaction. I haven't backed up my C phrase yet. But basically, that's what a faucet are. I think we should. Oh, there are more. Oh, here, here. They're, the team's great, but they so just. There we go. That's the Alchemy Sepolia faucet. So they, I think, only require you to log, they may not even require you to log in. I think they do, but but you just copy your wallet address. How do I get to the faucets? From where so, uh, yeah. You can go to sepoliafaucet.com, S-E-P-O-L-I-A faucet.com, and that one's the Alchemy faucet. Alchemy is a RPC provider. Uh, so I got one 21 hours ago. Yeah. I have to wait three more hours. But there'll be a CAPTCHA, you say send me ETH, and they'll ask you to create an account, log in. So the other way is go to Hamza.biz, and then we have this timer, because we think we're going to give you at least 10 days of current raft. We might upgrade or change okay. this raft, but take advantage of this eight days now to test this. You click the learn more, and it will take you to the blog. I know it's technical. Everyone's saying, Mike, you said too much, but it's a lot to share. It's a big announcement. But basically, you follow down here, and we give you four faucets here. And uh, each has different kind of requirements. Oh, okay. Again, we. It's, you don't. Otherwise, you, you can buy stuff with real money, but we're not. This is all. So I mean, and and this is part of the like the thing to remember is that it it's never going to go to live deployment requiring people to go to faucets, right? When we go to live deployment, we'll have like fiat on. We'll have the ability of someone to just sign in, use their credit card, grab crypto, and and immediately pay for it. Right. So the the login experience will be seamless. But this is a testnet deployment, so in order to do that, like yeah, you, you can't can. you can't buy testnet ETH with real money, and you can't load your your MetaMask with that way. So yeah, you got to jump through some hoops. It's a little bit technical. I can go through that process again tomorrow in a more streamlined way when I do like the blockchain 201 course and then we can produce yeah, that as well. Yeah, if anybody wants to wake up early 8 a.m. online. But we can also produce it as a, as a video. So. I actually, I did make a, I made a video. I put it, I did a screen share last mm -hmm. night too. Oh, go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Oh, question. Well, if people have trouble getting it, can they write on the Discord? I mean, yeah. even if, if I go and get some and I play with it, 
And if he's having trouble getting some, I can send him some of my fake money. I mean, people can pass around their fake money to test it, because that's the part that isn't. Okay. Wonderful work. question. Yes, if you join the discard, join the I, will, discard. I will personally send you Holia yeah. and, right. and, and Optimism Eve. I'll try. Man, that what a, what a good question. Yeah. All right. <laughs> a question from YouTube viewer Tanya. Any plans to utilize Solana chain? Solana? To, to Solana? Not yet. Probably not. I will. We'll talk about it. But I'm. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> so and for and I'm not going to get into it. I mean, I, I'm fine with Solana and a lot of great Solana devs. But but yeah, probably not. I mean, one. I mean, I do believe. I'm definitely. We're definitely multi. I think all of us are multi-chain people. But it's just also about stablecoin. I'm not sure if Solana has stablecoin. But one of our criteria was stablecoin. And others was just mass adoption. It's gonna be hard enough to tell people how to use MetaMask. I know Solana, I think, has has some good wallets too, but I like Cosmos as well. But I didn't really push Cosmos because I felt like Ethereum is the widest use of wallets, and we're trying to target like crypt, not crypto people. You need to start somewhere, basically. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we go to networking, and I know Bo is super. Busy, appreciate you sharing with us. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The future of e commerce is waiting. Load Pipe is back. It's a protocol. We are making the new way to do e commerce with blockchain technology. This is a very early stage. And we have Hamza as our first marketplace in this new ecosystem. It's very epic. If you want to participate, we are on an alpha stage in Q1 2024, where you can be a buyer or a, a vendor application only. Check it out at Hamza.biz for the marketplace or the overview of this protocol and subscribe for updates at loadpipe.com. See you there. And if you're looking behind me, it's kind of empty. I'm actually moving my house this week. There's always some drama with landlords and fixing things and etc. but it's a bigger and better upgrade anyway. So we'll be moving this weekend before this show goes live. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really happy Bo is on our team co-founding this with me and we have some great developers. Actually, for the first time in many projects I've worked on, we're doing heavy development before we're really marketing it. But we are starting to invest in marketing. Also, if you're interested to get involved either as a, in a community or even in a team, we are growing and, and, and hiring across the board. This is an exciting time. We're setting up a foundation, getting the first marketplace and protocol called Hamza.biz set up. Testnet is open. I, I know you might not know what Testnet means, but if you just test it, you will probably get a little bit of a reward for your trouble. So I would suggest learning a little bit, keeping an open mind a little bit. And if you want to learn more, jump into our Discord of Loadpipe, which is on the loadpipe.com website or map.loadpipe.com. It's something I'm going to be, I'm doubling down and I'm, I'm putting most of my efforts into now in 2024. And can't wait to convert some of our own e commerce brands into this blockchain e commerce protocol once it's ready. We're still very, very early. We're still in test nets, right? But we're hoping to go into production by November. It's always hard to put exact dates. But you can use these next few months to learn, to listen, to engage, to connect, and to get involved. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to connect more. See you on the inside if you're into this blockchain e-commerce, which I call a blue ocean. I'm reading a blue ocean strategy book right now. Alex recommended it to me. And there's just something in life. If it seems so much blood in the water, Red Sea, so much competition, just try to just remove yourself from that whole thing. And find there's something new that's got to be developing. It's in, it's natural in life. So, anyways, I'm gonna go. I gotta go. Keep moving. I'm packing up. So, thanks for watching. Take care. To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.